believe that the stories we tell create a reality. I really believe that. I think that it's uh, our very human way of expressing who we are and understanding our world. Everything, you know, marketing is a story, politics is a story, and I believe in the power of stories, and I'm very committed, and everyone at Closer is very committed in telling stories that we believe will make a positive impact in the world and that reflect our values, and hopefully that's what the hunting is for audiences. Welcome to episode 152 of Be The Drop, a weekly interview podcast sharing stories from people who inspire and motivate others to help you learn how to tell your story. I'm Amelia Veal, Director at Narrative Marketing and firm believer in the superpower of storytelling. Storytelling through film captures our visual and auditory senses. It can transport us into other places, other people's lives and other perspectives. Working in film is a dream many may have, but it is a challenging industry to get into and even harder to be successful in. Rebecca Summerton is a producer who works across genres and platforms and is the co-owner-director of the multi-award winning screen production company Closer Productions. Her feature film credits include Breakout Low Budget 52 Tuesdays through to her most recent project, The Hunting, which is currently screening on SBS. In today's episode of Be The Drop, recorded live at the Screenmakers Conference, Rebecca explains her will and inspiration to create and facilitate enchanting and enlightening stories in spite of the challenges the film industry presents. Creating for the screen is a complex and collaborative process and Rebecca discusses how doing it differently can help build your career. This is Rebecca's version of Be The Drop. Do you struggle to find good royalty-free music? We use and recommend Soundstripe across podcasts and videos as we love the variety of sounds with none of the boring elevator music. As a Soundstripe partner, we're excited to offer you a 10% discount code to access great tunes for your next project. Discount link in the show notes or enter the code BETHEDROP at checkout. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining us here at the next episode of Be The Drop very welcome. We're here at the Screenmakers Conference 2019 and you've just come straight from giving a presentation, which I'd love to chat about. But before we delve into that, I'd love to hear just a little bit about you and your journey about creating for the screen and why it is that you love this medium. Sure. So uh, as a young person, I was Uh, very interested in stories. So I was an avid reader from a very early age and I loved to write and I loved to act and I loved all all forms of um, storytelling that I could get my hands on. I was very drawn to it and I used to make really bad videos with our family um, video camera and uh, my understanding, I wasn't from a family where I had access to the theatre or access to ways to sort of... um, into that world so my my understanding of what storytelling was was to be an actor really is like oh, if I were, if I'm an actor then that I can engage with that in a meaningful way so I thought I wanted to be an actor and then uh, I did uh, some youth theatre and I loved it and I loved the collaboration I loved the magic of you know working with a group of people and that feeling when you're doing something together and, and telling a story together and uh, so I thought I'm either going to be a psychologist or an actor so I went to uni and studied psychology and um, it was interesting to me but it really wasn't uh, floating my boat and I dropped out I was a bit lost and I went to Sydney for a year and I was really sort of finding my people and um, you know in the day I had a day job um, with a big company and uh, was working for them and they after a year of working with them they said to, to me oh we'd like to put you on a career ladder and I freaked out and said I'm going back to Adelaide and I'm going back to my degree and I came home and studied film and drama and English at Flinders Uni 
And it was that year that I went back that I was in the same year as Sophie Hyde, who's my business partner, and uh, Matthew Bate, who's one of my business partners who I produce for, and Brian Mason. So my three, we all were in the same year at university together. And I felt like I'd found, you know, I'd found what I wanted to do. There's a lot of people to work with. We all worked across each other's projects in various forms. You know, I was doing sound and I was doing, you know, various things, but I knew that I wanted to produce. And so I did my degree and I I loved it. And then uh, I went straight into an attachment, which is like a traineeship on a feature film, and just didn't look back from there. I was crewing uh, on various feature films and sort of learning about um, production and ha- how the business worked. And at the same time, I continued producing small projects with the people I'd met at uni. And then it got to a point when I was working, I remember I was working on McLeod's Daughters as an assistant director. I got my first financed um, half hour broadcast documentary and I had to choose. And I, I took that leap and said, oh, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow this producing thing. But yeah, so that's, that's where my journey started. And I um, had a child. And then uh, when she was small, I worked at the South Australian Film Corporation. And that was really educational for me in terms of um, learning the other side of how things work, why projects are funded. And then um, I'd been there about three years and Sophie called me and she said they'd started Closer Productions and um, she said, we need another producer, what do you think? And I took that leap, which was a big leap because I was in a pretty good solid job and I had a small child and uh, I haven't looked back from there. So that's about eight years ago, I reckon. And um, I always try to remind myself about... Uh, trusting my gut you know and um, you might fail and but I don't see failure as a as a bad thing it's part of your journey you've got to sort of you know trust that inner um, compass and it's taken you to then create some amazing content that has won some incredible awards 52 Tuesdays was um, one of the earlier ones and that won a Sundance award It won Best Director at Sundance and it won the Crystal Bear at um, Berlin Film Festival, yeah, in 2014, which uh, really um, gave us a big profile internationally and and opened uh, up a lot of relationships and doors that hadn't, hadn't been there before. 52 Tuesdays was quite an original concept at the time. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Part of our journey as a company has been to sort of be as entrepreneurial as we can and really look at the opportunities that are available to us and try and grasp them and try and shape what we want to do to fit those opportunities. And that that has really been key. And so there was a low budget film initiative uh, called Film Lab around and um, Sophie and Matt, he wrote The Hunting, which premiered here and he wrote 52 Tuesdays. They set themselves the task of working out, you know, how can you make it better at low budget? How can we grasp this opportunity and do something really interesting with it? And Matt came up with the idea of a film set over 52 weeks. The team workshopped it and and, and worked out, so why would it need to be told over 52 weeks? And they came up with the story of a person who was transitioning genders. So we're very interested in the way that form and process influences a story, and that's always been a, a driving part of what we do. The other benefit of this model is not only is it really interesting for the story and a really interesting process, gives us the benefit of doing it in a less pressured way, in learning over a year, in kind of doing this grand experiment. And uh, it really paid off. And what the, you know, one of the great things that has come out of it is our relationship with Tilda Cobham Hervey, who is a South Australian artist. She had never been on screen before and we cast her as the daughter, Billy, in 52 Tuesdays. And she's since gone on to have a you know, remarkable international career. And that's something that's, uh, you know, we're really interested in doing as well is sort of nurturing new talent and giving opportunities to people who are around us. I love this concept that you've developed a process around how to approach the story and, and, and how you could do that differently. How have you taken that forward? What did you take from that project into future projects? I think um, what it gave us was the opportunity to practice so in television the traditional way of making stories is to have um, story rooms where you all sit down in a room and jam out the story and what it might be and we without knowing created that environment on 52 Tuesdays so it it gave us training in um, that very collaborative uh, way of creating a story. I think it also taught us that the way that you make something absolutely informs what you see on the screens and there's something about the way something 
something is made, its origin and the, the essence of it that is palpable, I think, you know, and it's why we're drawn to handmade things and art, you know, is because there is something about the creation that's a natural part of the creation of something that is, is, is in it, is as part of its essence and that's um, something we've tried to hold on to, you know, because it's about intention as well, I think, you know, what your intention is as you make. I absolutely love that concept and I 100% believe that there is an essence that gets passed through in that handmade process or you know in that process that comes from somebody making something and that that passion you know that they put into that gets moved forward so how you put that into the hunting where you know what are you going to do with that and can you talk to us about these points I can tell you that the hunting stars Sam Reed. Sam Reed's in Lambs of God. Jester Gal, who's in the third season of The Crown. Uh, Asha Keddy, who everybody knows, and Richard Roxburgh. So we have a really amazing lead adult cast. And um, four young actors from Adelaide. We're really pleased to be working with local talent. The stories about um, a boy and a girl are um, kind of falling for each other. There's a romance between them. And the girl shares, in an intimate moment, uh, a nude image of herself with the boy that she likes and then he decides to share that image with his best friend and then his best friend chooses to post that image online and the series is about the fallout of that choice and the way it affects the schools and the parents and the teenagers and it looks at ideas of trust and consent and hopefully can spark a conversation around this really complex topic and as artists we don't believe that um the act of sharing a nude selfie is bad in itself it's the um betrayal of trust and and the uh choice to do something without consent that is actually the problem and that perhaps we're not talking about that too much you know it's a very abstinence based conversation the same way as it was in the 1960s around sex just don't do it But we know that people are going to do it. We know that doesn't work. So we're really hoping to kind of generate a national and hopefully international conversation around this issue that parents and schools are really um, struggling with. Hopefully the series will um, help us all to talk about it in a more calm and kind of logical way. Well, as a parent, mum of two boys, I'm not sure that I'm equipped to have all those conversations or know how to do it in the best way. I want to encourage my boys in embracing sexuality, but respectfully. That's right. That's right. And I think we all do. And we met, we've met some amazing people who are working in the sexuality and relationship space who in your normal life you may not otherwise meet. And um, that's a real great byproduct of what I do. So we've met some excellent people who are working in this space who say, um, and, you know, there's this one woman called, I'll just give her a little plug, Tess OP, and she has a company called In Your Skin. And she goes into schools. She's South Australian. And she goes into schools and talks about sexuality and relationships. She's very sex positive and she talks about We want to teach our children to be able to enjoy their sexuality, how to have healthy sexual relationships, how to be respectful human beings. And it's like the same way we teach our children to say thank you and please and to how to be good human beings. In all other areas of their life, we don't have a conversation with them about how to be good sexual partners. We just can't. You know, we're too embarrassed to have that conversation. But it's a it's a really important part of being human. And it's um, we never help people kind of understand understand how to navigate the complex feelings around sex and how to understand them and how to deal with them and how to communicate well in those spaces. And we also have created this weird idea that online is different to real life about the way you speak to someone, about whether or not you have to have their consent to share their photo. You know, it's, but it is, it is real life. And, you know, for me, I'm a parent as well. And I have teenage, two teenage daughters. And, you know, I, I'm struggling to keep up, but we, we do, we need to look at it. It's, you know, we need to catch up with them. I think schools, educators, parents. These are such important conversations. And so from your perspective, what part does the screen play and producing series like The Hunting, where does that fit in with these important conversations? 
Well, I believe that the stories we tell create a reality. I really believe that. I think that it's uh, our very human way of expressing who we are and understanding our world. In fact, I've been reading this book, which I haven't finished yet, but I've just started reading it. It's very inspirational to me. It's, it's a big bestseller. It's called um, Sapiens. But it talks about that um, evolution of consciousness where basically Homo sapiens were able to think in an abstract form and that this is actually our power as a species that we can think abstract. And storytelling is that. Storytelling is a way of creating reality uh, with our brains. The stories we tell each other are the realities that we create. Everything, you know, marketing is a story, politics is a story, a whole, everything, he does this wonderful job in that book of like saying a corporation is a story. It's not a tangible thing. It's a story that we've made up and we've all agreed, mutually agreed to believe in. And I believe in the power of stories and I'm very committed and everyone at Closer is very committed in telling stories that we believe will make a positive impact in the world and that reflect our values. Values. And I think the hunting is an expression of that. Hopefully people find the series entertaining. You know, my favourite kind of storytelling is when I'm entertained and I'm, I'm really involved in the characters and the world. And at the same time, I'm being asked to question something or I'm being taught something or I'm being, you know, that's the sweet spot. And hopefully that's what the hunting is for audiences. Absolutely, yes. I mean, you are talking my language, storytelling as a superpower. I mean, for me, I think it's the ultimate superpower. So what about young people who want to come and get involved in the industry, you know, in the screen industry? What advice do you normally give them? It's tough. It's a, it's a, it can be a tough industry. Um, I think that people should believe in the stories they want to tell and they should reach out. There's a lot of the industries are very, they have a lot of networking events. There's a lot of, in South Australia, for example, there's the Media Resource Centre and there are uh, organisations that you can key into to start um, meeting with people who are like-minded and at a, at a similar level to you um, that you can start making. I would say just in whatever way you can, start doing it, you know. So believe in your story and find, look at the resources around you, look at the organisations that you have access to, look at the people that you have access to, look at, look for opportunities. If it's what you really want to do, commit to it, get out there and meet people because it is a collaborative art form. You can't, you can't do it on your own. Not to say there are certainly parts of it you can do on your own, but at its heart, it's a collaborative art form. It's, um, you need quite a few people to pull it off and um, meet people, try and find like-minded people who also want to tell the same kind of stories that you want to tell and just do even if it's in its first instance you know without very much money or whatever but yeah doing I believe in doing yeah fantastic well Rebecca thank you so much in conclusion can I ask if you could try and summarize in one way what do you think it is that people need you know how do you think people can communicate to inspire and motivate so is there some sort of sum version of that well I think I'm gonna to have to go back to storytelling really I think um, you know I believe I really believe in storytelling and I believe that even the stories we tell ourselves about what we can do and who we are are really important so you know my message might, might be um, think about the stories you're telling at every level in your life and if those stories aren't working for you aren't helping you how can you reframe those stories to be ones that help you be who you want to be or get to where you want to get to yeah Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Be The Drop. Don't forget to subscribe in order to ensure you never miss out on one of our weekly episodes. Be The Drop is produced by Narrative Marketing, where we believe that stories connect individuals and that powerful storytelling can positively impact the world. To unleash your storytelling superpower, visit narrativemarketing.com.au or check out our social links in the show notes. To contact me directly with any specific comments you have, you can email me via amelia at narrativemarketing.com.au. And don't forget that whilst a task or challenge may seem overwhelming, a waterfall begins with one drop and look what comes from that.